السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من أطاعه فقد رشد واحتدى ومن عصاه فقد ذل وغوى ولا يضر إلا نفسه ولن يضر الله شيئا أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبحوه بكرة وأسيلا أيها الإخوة والأخوات في الإسلام This ayah from سورة الفتح And that is an address to our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم 
Indeed, we have sent you as a witness, as the one who brings the good news, as a warner, so that you believe in Allah and His Prophet and assist Him and honor Him. وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَسِيلًا And as for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, celebrate His praises morning and the evening. My dear brother, sister in Islam, what is happening nowadays uh, in France, that is something uh, not, accept not acceptable at all. We, we can't approve such type of acts to kill the people inside their churches, inside their places of worship, as we don't like anyone to, to enter in a mosque and then create a havoc there, a massacre there. That is not acceptable at all. But we have to think, and the European minds should think, that what is the reason behind it? The wise people always think, whenever anything bad happens, what was the reason behind it? Try to remove those reasons, so that you can have uh, a peaceful, a secure society. This people don't want to understand. This what they are not thinking about. The hatred which some of them have developed in their hearts for centuries since the Crusades, that hatred is uh, coming again and again in different forms and pictures. These blasphemous cartoons which have come out first from Denmark, I remember in 2005, and since then those people who got this sick mind, instead of condemning them they want to project them again and again. Our question is, what had the Prophet ﷺ do to you? Why you are projecting these cartoons to ridicule the Prophet ﷺ? If uh, you have uh, any hatred towards any Muslim, leader or a sovereign then it is between two of you you can do that but to reach to the highest authority in Islam the most noblest person in Islam and to ridicule him and then you think then there are about 1.8 billion Muslims in this planet and they can absorb it, they can accept it. No, they can't accept it. You have seen the Muslims fighting each other. Countries fighting another Muslim country. There are differences and disputes among the Muslims within their own countries. But when it comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are all united. Nobody, nobody can tolerate such type of insult to the dignity and honor of the Prophet You must realize that. And uh, what is this double standard policy? That when it comes to Holocaust, you can't speak about it. You can't say a word about it. 
yes that is uh, that is what uh, you think about it and you can dictate a ruling about it but when it comes to our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you forget the same ruling which you have done insulting him is to create this these feelings ill feelings among the hearts of such a great number of the muslims my dear brothers but here comes this question why these people they got such a daring stand against islam against the prophet of islam why what is the reason behind it the reason behind it read the hadith of sauban narrated by sauban radhiyallahu ta'ala an that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said يوشك أن يتداعى عليكم الأمم كما تتداعى الأكلة على قصعتها. A time would come when other nations are going to invite each other to attack you or to blaspheme you, just like the people. who are inviting each other on a dinner on a food to eat that food so in the very same way a time would come when the nations would try to get together and call each other to eat you up the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they asked this question i mean qillatin ya rasulullah is it because we would be very few This is why these people become so courageous against us. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, "No. Bal antum kafir, walakinnakum ghusaun ka ghusa al-sayl." No, you would be many. You would be numerous. You would be in a great number, but you would be just like the straw on a flood water. غصاء من كغصاء السيل. and then they ask this question, O Prophet of Allah, why? Why did it happen? and then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, because أصحابكم الوهن. because you people would have the disease of الوهن. وهن in Arabic actually it is called weakness. but they wanted to know what is that wahan so they asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ma hadha al wahan what is that al wahan and what was the reply of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hubb al dunya wa karahiyat al maut love of this material world and hate for the death and the people would be so much attracted fascinated to all the beauties of luxuries of this life that they love this world they want to remain here they want to live here they don't want to die at all is it not the reason yes that is the reason the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us people ask this question what should we do all right from time to time from places to places from countries to countries there are demonstrations today on friday there would be big demonstrations everywhere in the muslim world but these demonstrations and people have witnessed them since 2005 they did not bring a change some other people they have suggested that the most influential type uh, of act would be what sumama ibn athal has done sumama bin athal 
He was a leader in Najd, Najd area of Arabian Peninsula during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was an enemy to Islam. He wanted to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to his people, Is there anyone who bring me this person? And in one of the expedition, he was caught and he was brought to al Madina. The leader, the leader of his tribe, Sumama ibn Usal, and by the order of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was tied with one of the pillars of the mosque. In those times, those days in the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were not uh, stone pillars, it was just the trunk of the tree. He was tied there. The Prophet Wasallam passed by him. So, Mama, how do you feel? And he did not show any change, any, any change of heart. It happened for three days. And the Prophet Wasallam was asking him because he can see the people praying. He, see, he can see the humbleness of the people as well. On the third day, the Prophet Wasallam said, All right, untie all the ropes, let him free. He was freed. That person who, who wanted to kill the Prophet one day, who was the enemy of Islam, the Prophet Wasallam is setting him free in this day, in this manner. He went to the nearest garden, he took a bath, he came back and he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. And he entered into Islam, he became Muslim. He went to Umrah and he said to the people of Makkah, that because he was the leader in Najd and uh, a lot of grain used to be brought from Najd to Al Hijaz. He said, Not a single grain of wheat is going to reach you until the Prophet commands it, allows it to you. This is what he did, this is what he announced. The people who are doing all these actions, they got this materialistic mind. Only a financial blow could set them right. And this is what you can say the first man in the history of Islam, Sumama ibn Athal, did it. But this is a temporary measurement. The most effective measurement would be, what would it, what would it be? These people, they don't know about the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. They don't know that he is, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He is a mercy for the whole mankind. They don't know that. And this is why, whatever they read in their books, right from the school days, to the colleges, to the universities, they don't know much about Islam. They don't know much about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So here there may be two tasks. One, that is to, to have uh, the books on Sira, and there are very good books in, on Sira, in English, in other languages, in French as well. Especially in France, the work of Dr. Hamidullah is marvelous. That person who remained throughout his life in a small apartment in Paris, 
and he has uh, compiled uh, so many books in French about Islam, about the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the one who translated the Quran into French language as well. So much has been written in French language, in English, of course, a lot. So we need to we need, we, we need to publicize it. We need to buy these books and then gift it to your neighbors, to those people who are around you. Let them read who is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And someone who said these things, he said the right thing. That there was a time, 50 years ago, when we want to introduce Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the people. We want to speak about Islam. But now everybody wants to know about Islam, what Islam is, why all what is happening. They want to know about Islam. Islam is everywhere. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is seen everywhere. So they want to know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Provide them with the books. If each one of you takes upon himself that at least I will buy five copies of, uh, of this book. For example, one of the best book about Sira is Ar-Rahiq al maktum The Sealed Nectar by Sheikh Safi Rahman Al-Mubarak Puri. That book which is one of uh, the concise book and a very good book on Sira. So buy five uh, copies of that book and give it to those people whom you know, among your friends, among the non-Muslims. And the second thing which is most effective, but people are not willing to do it. If you yourself, if all the Muslims throughout the world, 1.8 billion, say 2 billion Muslims, they becomes a living example of Islam. I can't say they become uh, their 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 lifestyle become like that of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is quite impossible. But at least Saddidu Waqaribu, Saddidu Waqaribu. When you try to reach your goal, if you can't hit on the target be very near to the target. That is called, that is Saddidu wa Kharib. So try to be a good Muslim. With your example, with your practical example, people would know what Islam is. They may not read any book at all, but when you see that this, my Muslim brother, is so compassionate, so merciful, so helpful, so purified. Yes, they are going to, to be impressed. Last, in my last khutbah, I have mentioned about that woman, French woman, who was made hostage in Mali. For four years, she has been a hostage. And the very same Prime Minister, uh, President of France, he wanted to get her back with some other hostages as well. And he spent a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of euros to get them free. So she was captivated by the Muslim group, one of the Muslim group there. Anyhow, she was released and she came to France, she came to Paris. Now the president got a very good opportunity for him to receive her and then say a few more words about, about Islam because he has already done so. But on this day he wanted to say some more things. And to his astonishment, he was bewildered, he was shocked. 
when this woman came out of the plane with covering her head and the first thing he said that I am no more Sophie, I am Maryam. I have accepted Islam. It was just a great shock to that person, the president of France, that he was not able to speak a word. <laughs> he left his speech and he returned back to his office. Why this woman who was in the captive of the Muslims for four years, she must be dead against them? No, she was impressed by the people around her. She said, nobody touched me. Nobody wanted to dishonor me. These people whom, with whom I lived, they were noble people, they were very pure. They want to, they are washing their hands, their face five times a day. Then they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were poor, but they were very rich in their ethics, in their characters. They were lofty peoples. She was impressed by the behavior. A suluk, a suluk, suluk al-Muslim. The behavior of a Muslim, that is going to impress. And that is the everlasting prescription to cure this disease which has spread far and wide in Europe, in other countries of the world. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي وبركم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا للإسلام وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أما بعد فإن الله يقول في القرآن المجيد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والإسيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم اخذل الكفر الفجر الملاحدة الذين يعرضون عن اتباع دينك وسنة نبيك اللهم ارضى عن جميع المسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات وعن جميع الصحابة والصحابيات ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين إباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم السلام